Welcome to Bike Life Radio from KWNK 97.7 FM from the Reno Bike Project, NevadaBike.org and BikeWashoe.org. We ride our bikes out into the world with a recorder and talk to people about their bikes and their lives. I'm Kai Plaskon. Right on. Last week, we heard from people who live on Keystone Avenue in Reno. They're terrified by high speeds and accidents right outside their front doors. It's basically a four-lane highway. Now, the Regional Transportation Commission is asking what the public thinks about their plans to replace the bridge on Keystone Avenue. The bridge on Keystone Avenue goes over the Truckee River, by the way. The plans that they're putting forward wouldn't solve the speed problems. It might even make the road more dangerous by inviting semi-trucks to use California and Keystone. Right now, when they turn, it's too tight and the trucks get stuck. The plan is to make it easier for those trucks to make the turn, and that would invite more trucks to use the already dangerous road. You can go to keystonebridgeproject.com to make your voice heard. In part two of our interview with residents, we continue to talk to Bree Casper, who lives on Keystone Avenue. She's pleading for the public to think outside the box and make the area safer, starting with the bridge. I mean, for one, my mom was handicapped and in a wheelchair, and there were not a lot of places that we could go and be outside and enjoy Reno. And it'd be really nice if there was at least one spot that thought about things like that. You're listening to Bike Life Radio, KWNK 97.7 FM. We're walking along the river walk right now, and we're talking to Bree Casper about uh, changes that are proposed for the Keystone Bridge. Uh, the Regional Transportation Commission is taking public comment right now on uh, how that bridge could be changed. Do you feel heard with your ideas? I have a feeling that you are on Bike Life Radio and want to be on Bike Life Radio because you don't feel heard. Well, I just think there's a lot of innovative ideas that could be um, taken into consideration, especially right now as they're just starting the design phase of the bridge. We've just exited public comment. Um, And like you said, there were several meetings where they asked the public what our thoughts were about the bridge and construction phase. Um, And no, to be honest, they said it was very important that they get our comments and that they really mattered. But when we got down to it, I and the rest of the neighbors didn't really feel heard. Did you hear lots of different innovative ideas? I did. In fact, closing the bridge permanently wasn't even on my radar until I went to the public meeting. And several neighbors brought up how much it would improve the neighborhood. It would improve their quality of life. And and then I started thinking about it, and it's true. It would really make this area safer, not just traffic-wise, but pedestrian-wise. It would really increase connectivity between a lot of neighborhoods and allow the community to come down to the downtown area with multiple ways, instead of just driving and looking for parking, that they could walk down with paths. They could bike down with bike paths. You know, the fact that the city wants to corral bikers to a certain area of town, that's just not how bikers think. They are all access people. And you would kind of expect them to want to be able to have more than one route to get around. Um, And so it'd be nice if we could just kind of take a big picture look at the city and realize that developing a bridge exactly like the one that we just did on Virginia Street doesn't really need to happen. And how have you seen, we're talking to Bree Casper, uh, who lives on Keystone Avenue, and uh, there's four lanes of high-speed traffic just within feet of her door, and there's been major accidents right in front of her house where cars have crashed into uh, her friend's cars, um, completely totaling cars. This is very unsafe and the bridge currently doesn't allow any pedestrian or bicycle access and they're talking about 
adding that, um, which is nice, but uh, in Bree's opinion, it doesn't really go far enough or thinking about new ways of, of uh, improving. Uh, I think some other ways of doing it are just to reduce the number of lanes of traffic so that the speed is reduced right. there, right? Do you feel safe? In front of my house? No. I tell anyone who needs to park to visit me to park on First Street um, and just walk around the block because their car, their things aren't safe parked on Keystone. How has it changed over the years? You said that uh, today's traffic on Sunday is the way it used to be, like the good old days or something or what? Right, right. but like last night, for instance, it was Saturday night. Um, and you know, we expect more traffic, louder traffic Saturday night, but you don't expect drag racing. You don't expect people's speakers to be rattling your home for hours. Are they it, drag racing? It is, it's drag racing. They start um, probably, you know, uh, around First Street and they get gearing up and they go up and over the bridge and they use the bridge as a ramp up. Um, and so this is why it's important to talk about big picture what we're looking at here. It's like if you're going to start involving pedestrians and bikers on a bridge that people are also using for drag racing at a different time of day, it needs to be able to be monitored some way. No, they could also design the bridge so it's not uh, conducive to drag racing. That would be nice. Like we, people could go drag race on the freeway, right? Like that. That would be a better spot. Well, in my day, they used to do it back, you know, in the factory area, uh. deep sparks, you know, uh -huh. no. <laughs> not in neighborhoods. <laughs> That's terrible. I'm really sorry that you've had to deal with this. Um, and and thank you for speaking up uh, about, you know, what you would like to see and, and saying that there should be something completely different. Uh, we'll talk to RTC and ask them, like, do you feel like it's, it's kind of over, like done? and they're going to pick and then that's it or what? What's no, the next step? Now, I guess there's like about 15 more meetings. Oh my so God. if people are interested in putting in their two cents and have ideas on designs or think they will have things they'd like to see inputted into the bridge, now is a great time to speak up. Um, I know going... Sarah going? Yeah, Sarah going. That's yeah. perfect. She's, she's in charge of the whole project. There's a website... Uh, keystonebridgeproject.com I think it is uh -huh. and you can get involved and put your two cents in and it is not too late to speak up and make your voices heard um, honestly their design options are making the bridge look a lot like the Virginia Street Bridge and just do we want a walking path on one side or two and how big do we want the median in the middle and to me that's not innovative that's not giving somebody options that's like, this is what we're going to put in. What color do you want it? <laughs> you know, and, and to be honest, like, uh -huh. if we're going to talk about making a change, like, let's really make a change and let's look at what the problem is here. The problem is houseless populations. The, houseless, the, uh, the problem is also speed of cars and not having connectivity for bikers, for pedestrians, for handicap access. You know, it's the same problems that they listed in the Keystone study that was done in 2014. And that's why I keep referencing that because those problems haven't been fixed. Yeah. And so let's take this opportunity to fix those problems while we're using the federal government's money to do that. Yeah. So fixing, uh, do you want to start walking back? Sure. Yeah. Um, so fixing the problem of uh, speed, like do, do any of the design proposals appear to do that? No, not really. In fact, they almost look worse. They look like the bridge actually has more of a ramp um, and it might even entice people to do more speeding on the bridge. Yeah, the speed on the bridge, it's a, a little mind blowing that we know that that's a problem, speed, and that none of the proposals seem to solve it and in fact would make it worse and more dangerous. Yeah, in fact, one of the neighbors at the meeting even brought up that the police have told them that they are unable to enforce the speeds on Keystone because there is nowhere for them to safely park and pull out and catch people because there's so much increased traffic and increased speed. So what you're saying is that the street is even unsafe for the police. Exactly. Oh, that's, exactly. That's, uh, that sounds bad. <laughs> Sounds like there needs to be some changes made. Yeah. 
Huh. And so um, this process, have you gone through this kind of process before? Uh, you know, you're, you're pretty heavily engaged, uh, but have you gone through it before? No, I've never done anything like this before. Um, really interested to see, you know, <laughs> how the city takes a civilian's input in something like this. Or even I, if they do. Right. I mean, I understand the project is the bridge, but it's also about the street leading to the bridge that they're working on. And the people who live uh, Around on the bridge. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And uh, the, the people who want to use it. This is KWNK 97.7 FM. You can make your voice heard by going to keystonebridgeproject.com. At the end of the show, we're going to have some recommendations for the survey if you fill it out on that, on that website. Now back to our interview with Bree, who lives on Keystone Avenue. We're walking on Riverside Drive right now, uh, talking about the Keystone Bridge. Listen to Bike Life Radio, KWNK 97.7 FM. Keystone Bridge does not have uh, any pedestrian or bicycle access currently. And there's a proposal to add it. Um, an interesting thing is to just kind of make more supports on the bridge or, or support it and then maybe take away a lane of traffic or something like that to try and reduce speeds or put in uh, some traffic calming devices on it in some way or another, right? And uh, so any other thoughts, Bree, before we, we move on? About the design? Oh, yeah, so you can go to keystonebridgeproject.com, right? And make comments, is that right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. I think there's what, some taking comments. What would you tell people, like so a lot of times at the Truckee Meadows Bicycle Alliance, we would write something for the public to say if they wanted to. And so if you could make a suggestion for the public to go to uh, keystonebridgeproject.com and send an email to Sarah Going, the project manager, what would, what would you like to see them say? Oh, just that it's, we've been waiting for some kind of design on the Keystone Bridge since 1966. And it would be nice to see some big picture perspective as we get ready to plan for the future. As this bridge is not just a bridge from our past, but a bridge to our future. And what do we want the future of our town to look like? Insert that here. <laughs> what about speed? You want to tell them to like do something to lower the speed? I mean, I would love to see them realize that it is mixed zoning and it is residential in part of it. And it would be nice to see the speed limit turn to 25 miles an hour getting, leading up to the bridge. Maybe even reduced lanes to one lane each way with a turn lane in the middle to provide room for bike lanes on each side and ample parking on each side of the street. I think that would be really nice to see on Keystone leading up to the bridge. I think it would be phenomenal to discourage people commuting through this area and make it more of a community space by having people either turn down 2nd Street and go down to downtown or turn and go down Booth and be in the residential area. But if they shut down this bridge to through traffic, it would make people take the infrastructure that is actually built for this amount of increased traffic. It would have people on the McCarran Bridge. It would have people downtown where we technically want people going is the downtown area. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point is where does this traffic go if the traffic uh, is not here on Keystone? I guess in the 2014 Keystone study that they did, more than 80% of the traffic here going over the bridge is commuter traffic, isn't even people who are in this neighborhood. They're not people going to Reno High. They're not people going to, you know, the store from their house. And if we could encourage people to stay closer to their neighborhoods and find other ways to transport, it would make it easier for this neighborhood to be able to access the things that are here for us, like our grocery stores, like our convenience stores, like the gas station. But as it is, I can't pull out of my driveway on Food Truck Friday. 
because so many people are commuting here and the city hasn't thought about the infrastructure and what it takes to make that amount of people come into one space. Yeah, so that's an interesting idea is maybe another parking garage and then riding their bikes to Food Truck Friday. Do you think that they need four lanes traffic there? I think what would be nice and actually fix a lot of the problem over there is if there was a pedestrian bridge that went over the Boo Street Bridge that kind of went from the Crooked Mile and went over Boo Street Bridge and then connected this river walk. That way, pedestrians wouldn't be slowing down the turning from right to left as people went over the bridge there, and it would just be traffic moving as usual. Wow. Kind of like they do over at the university. There's that bridge that goes over the over Virginia Street uh-huh. that allows the, the university pedestrian traffic to cross and have ease of access without interfering with the transportation. And this is just one day of the week, Food Truck Friday. There are other days of the week that it would be nice for pedestrians like that runner to not have to stop at the corner and wait for their turn and lose their heart rate and their rhythm. You know, there's a bigger piece to this picture. It's like, let's make every part of the community happy with the changes that we do here. This is Bike Life Radio, KWNK 97.7 FM. We're talking to Bree Casper, who lives on Keystone Avenue. It's dangerous. The speeds are way too high. The RTC, Regional Transportation Commission, is taking public comment right now on replacing the bridge. And it has some proposals it's put forward, but none of the designs would solve the speed problem. In fact, it could get worse inviting more semi-trucks onto that bridge. Go to keystonebridgeproject.com to make your voice heard. Let's get back to our interview with Bree Casper. What about the people who are accustomed to using it to commute somewhere and would have to take a longer route because it were restricted or closed or something like that? What would you say to them? I mean, I guess we're going to see what that's like anyway when they do the construction. Because technically the problem is that the structure of the bridge needs worked on regardless of if it's taken down and rebuilt or if it gets edited and you know reinforced it's going to need to be closed regardless so we can kind of see what it would be like then Uh, but then it'll be kind of too late too because they will have built the bridge or they're building it and so maybe one idea is to do a, a pilot project where they reduce the lanes potentially and see what happens right that'd be good yeah, like especially try it since out. we have all this time while we're doing the designing and the phase that we can see what slowing traffic down and reducing it to one lane would be like i kind of think it'd be nice to have one lane in the middle of the bridge that's just for emergency personnel so that you know sirens ambulances police can just get through without waiting for cars to get by or causing some kind of problem i think that's actually why They want to keep it two lanes each way on the bridge is because of emergency personnel. But if we turned the middle lane into a lane for them instead of a 12 foot median, then we would be able to facilitate that concern. Yeah. And the only reason why they have this median there is because the traffic is so fast and it's all going to crash into each other if they don't have a median there. It's like a really dangerous. So we're talking about the Keystone Bridge Project. We're underneath the Keystone Bridge. We're talking to Bree Casper, who lives on Keystone, and it's extremely dangerous, and there's high-speed traffic, and they're talking about um, replacing this bridge and adding pedestrian and bicycle um, facilities on it. You're listening to Bike Life Radio, KWNK 97.7 FM. You can go to keystonebridgeproject.com and leave a comment there, if you'd like, uh, about what you think should happen on this bridge. Um, and in the meetings that you've gone to, or maybe one meeting that you've gone to, have you, um, what, what was your reaction to the, the meeting itself? Uh, how did it go? What, uh, what was interesting? I really enjoyed the, the meeting. I liked getting to know my neighbors better and their perspective on what needed to happen and the problems in the area. Like I said, I wasn't even on my radar to shut the bridge down until I got to the meeting. Um, I was just thinking that we needed to have better crosswalks to get across the Riverwalk Street um, for pedestrians. And I thought we could just make some couple little changes. We didn't need to make a multi-billion dollar change. But now that I realize that we have federal money and we can do some things with this budget, it's like, well, let's do something innovative. What's the reason to do the exact same bridge that we have on Virginia Street 
if we could do something unique and solve more than one problem in, in one. So currently, Kai, we're underneath the bridge um, of Keystone and we're looking at the Riverside Drive. And you can clearly see that there are no bike lanes here. They're expecting bikers to just be driving side by side with cars because the lane is wide enough to hold both. But there isn't any indicator of who's supposed to be where. There are scooters strewn everywhere around the facility, this area. Um, it's a clear where pedestrians are supposed to be on this sidewalk. Um, but technically, if we had two handicapped people next to each other, this sidewalk could not hold both of them going next to each other. Yeah, I think that's a really, really good point and something that I've talked to a lot of people about is that you can't walk side by side on the sidewalk and pass other people who might be going the other direction. M meanwhile, in a car, people can be right next to each other and pass each other, um, no problem. And I don't know why they don't make sidewalks so that people can pass each other. It's really annoying. So just standing here, you can see the collide of scooters, bikers, automobiles, pedestrians, and there is a lack of handicapped mm people here and there's it's clear why with all of the ramps with all of the deterrence i mean the only place a handicapped person could get on here there isn't a crosswalk to cross across so where is this person in a wheelchair supposed to park somewhere over there and then they're supposed to wheel themselves over here without a crosswalk and then they're supposed to make their way over these bumps and then they're supposed to go uphill <laughs> <laughs> to be able to enjoy our river walk from a wheelchair which you can't even see the water so like if we had a way that handicap access could happen above the bridge and people who have physical disabilities could still enjoy the water and seeing the water flowing kind of like this experience but above and a little bit of Idlewild with the workout facilities and a little bit of Wingfield with like a platform that people could do workshops and they could teach things and it would be just so great to have a community space that would really combine this area when you look at it on an aerial you can see that this is what's needed is a green belt connecting Reno's downtown area been talking to Bree Casper, who is a homeowner on Keystone Avenue, about uh, the Keystone Avenue Bridge Project. You can go to KeystoneBridgeProject.com. Is it KeystoneBridgeProject.com? Is that what it is? Yeah. yeah. KeystoneBridgeProject.com uh, and uh, leave a comment about and, and view some of the proposals there, I think, too. And uh, tell them to think outside the box about uh, how to replace or change the use of this bridge. and. Uh, reduce speeds which would uh, be safer for cyclists and pedestrians. They are considering putting a uh, bicycle and pedestrian pass path on Keystone Bridge which currently does not have one. Bikes and pedestrians are not allowed on the bridge. It's like illegal to go on there. Uh, and so one of your ideas is to use the water somehow on the bridge, right? The, the water from the Truckee River on the Keystone Bridge. Tell us about that. Right. So if we had awareness of the fact that we were going to do a land bridge that involved some kind of park-esque, lots of greenery on top of the bridge, I mean, it's going over water. We could feasibly pipe the infrastructure into the creation of the bridge to allow it to water everything above it and then funnel things back underneath and kind of bring awareness to the water system, water frustration, all the different things that we can do with, um, you know, planting, agriculture, bringing all that to our downtown area. We don't need to have another concrete jungle bridge. Yeah, which, which it really is. Like that's what the proposal looks like exactly. is a big, thing of concrete right like a huge thing of concrete it does look, make it look a lot like a highway to be honest yeah. and I don't personally want to walk over a highway I don't want to bike on a highway I would not push a handicapped person in a wheelchair on a highway I wouldn't want to wheel myself on this highway looking bridge so it's like if we want all the things to be happy we should probably start segregating where things go so that everybody gets what they need. The cars get the safety that they need and the separation from too much pedestrian traffic that slows down traffic. And we can have the safety that pedestrians need so that people like that man we just spoke to can feel comfortable having his son outside on their front lawn 
and not have to worry that a car is going to come up and over the sidewalk that like has happened across the street from me and cause property damage or worse, lose a life. We're talking to Bree Casper about the KeystoneBridgeProject.com. Uh, uh, that's where you would go to leave a comment. And uh, they're talking about putting bicycle and pedestrian facilities on Keystone Bridge. Right now, it's just a big concrete thing with no trees on it or anything. And it just looks like a big giant freeway. Um, and the speeds are so high and the traffic volume is so high that uh, police have told um, uh, Bree that they do not feel safe enough to try and enforce traffic uh, laws. And so everybody's driving 45 miles an hour on this 30 mile Plus, per hour some street. Some people 60s. I mean, it's, they just go zooming by. I couldn't even tell you what kind of car it was. Thank you for being on Bike Life Radio, Bree. Thank you. I appreciate it, Kai. Good luck. I hope uh, I hope you succeed in in beautifying uh, this this bridge Thank and the you. and the your proposal. Bring the community together. That's the focus here. Definitely. Good. Thank you. So you know what I think is interesting is that there. That was Bree, who lives on Keystone Avenue, where accidents, terrifying speeds, and pedestrian deaths are rampant. But proposals to replace the Keystone Bridge would not solve those problems, and it might make it worse inviting semi-trucks that are traveling west on California Avenue to turn onto the Keystone Bridge and make it even worse. You can go to keystonebridgeproject.com, keystonebridgeproject.com, and fill out the survey there uh, and make your voice heard. We have some suggestions for how to fill out the survey, if you like. Question number one is, do you support the proposed alternatives? The answer could be no. The proposed alternatives do not sufficiently reduce speed. They are not appropriate for the neighborhood, do not beautify the area as well, and semi-trucks should not be traveling on California Avenue or Keystone. Four, on question number four, it's asking you to pick between two different Uh, bicycle facility designs. There's a shared use path and then there's a cycle track. The shared use path would put bicyclists in conflict with pedestrians. So we're suggesting that you pick the two-way protected cycle track as the preferred alternative. On question number six, residents of the area complain about high speeds, right? Well, The answer there could be that, well, people are complaining about high speeds, there's accidents, and it has a dangerous feel right now, and the road is dangerous. It's kind of a freeway-like road with five lanes across, if you count the turn lane, and it was never appropriate for the area. The density and traffic volume also do not require four lanes of traffic. So those are the answers to the questions on the survey that we're suggesting that you can fill out. Uh, That survey, again, is available at keystonebridgeproject.com. Keystonebridgeproject.com. This is KWNK 97.7 FM from the Reno Bike Project on Grove Street and NevadaBike.org. BikeWashoe.org, too. That's it for Bike Life Radio. We ride our bikes out into the world with a recorder, and we talk to people about their bikes and their lives. Now at a new time at 5.30 every Sunday. I'm Kai Plaskon. Ride on. Bicycle man, you know 